Hello everyone and welcome back to the final video in my top favorites watercolor colors of 2023. Let's just pretend like we're not already a month into the new year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're just gonna breeze past that. Today we are going to be looking at the final 12 colors of this 48 color set that I put together in the last, you know, quarter third of 2023. Today's colors focus on earth browns, earth reds, and dark neutrals. If you missed parts one, two, or three, pause this video, watch those first, then join us back here to finish out the series. The first video will explain the setup for this whole uh, journey and how I am painting the swatches. Before we dive in, I wanted to let you know that I am shaking things up on Patreon this year. Beginning this month, January 2024, I have two new tiers available. In addition to the library of over 100 watercolor tutorials and monthly live streams, there are two new tiers, Sticker Club and Print Pals. These new tiers will have Patreon exclusive artwork each month in the form of high quality matte vinyl stickers and 5x7 watercolor prints. If you sign up before January 31st, you can receive this month's exclusive artwork, which include a little link sticker and a stargazing lioness print. I am seriously so happy with the way that this lion turned out. It's one of my favorite things I've done in a long time. If you'd like to pick one up, be sure to sign up on Patreon before the end of this month. And of course, the link is in the description below. Picking back up with our mid-valued browns from the last video, the next color is Mars Brown PBR6 from Schmincke. Several years ago, if you had asked me to list my favorite brown pigments, I'm not sure if I would have listed this one off the top of my head. However, I find myself reaching for it whenever I have my Schmincke palette open, and since adding it to this palette, it has easily slid into the role that Burnt Sienna used to fill for me. To clarify, this is not the same hue as Burnt Sienna, but I still find myself using it in places where I would have gone to Burnt Sienna. It granulates and glazes well, but potato, potato, you can easily sub this out for Burnt Sienna if you prefer. My favorite Burnt Sienna is from Daniel Smith. Mahogany Brown PBR 33 by Schmincke is another pretty unique pigment in their line. It is even closer in hue to Burnt Sienna than the previous Mars Brown, however it granulates much more readily. I've really found myself gravitating towards these earth tones and convenience screens that can be used straight from the pan with little mixing. It's not that I can't mix interesting browns from other colors, but after learning those foundational skills and with painting as much wildlife as I do, I have personally found it much more exciting and enjoyable to paint with these really beautifully crafted colors that don't demand that additions be made to them unless you want to do so. I still adjust my colors here and there, but it's really satisfying for me to use these pigments that just absolutely shine on their own with their own spectacular personality. After that whole spiel, I do have a color that I mix often with others, and that is Terracotta PR102 by Da Vinci. Aside from Hokkaido Orange that we saw in the very first video in this little mini series, this is the only other orange in this palette. I'm using little air quotes here, um, which means that it's a pretty essential color for me being able to neutralize any of my blues. This is a color that I really fell for when I was testing out colors for my Embrace Opacity palette with Da Vinci. I loved it so much that I even happily substituted it into my larger Earth Friendly palette with them when P048 was discontinued last year. If you love transparent colors, this is not going to be the color for you. However, I cannot overstate the body that this color has. It mixes so well with other colors, making for some really stunning peaches, rich reds, muted greens, cool browns, and soft grays. If I haven't sold you on this one yet, you can swap it out for another Mars orange-like color, or if you still have quinacridone burnt orange lying around, um, that would work here too. Next up is Terra Rosa from M. Graham, or equally alternatively to Da Vinci's Indian Red. Both are made from PR 101. Indian Reds can vary a lot in hue from brand to brand. These two versions made by companies on the west coast of the United States just hit me a little bit differently. They are smooth, rich, opaque brick reds, 
And this is the version of PR 101 that I insisted on being used for Denise's gray and Da Vinci very kindly obliged despite it being a difficult pigment to get just right. You all know I love granulation, but for a velvety gray, this is a must have when mixed with a smooth cerulean blue. I use it all the time in other mixes and even straight from the palette at times. It's really great if you dilute it down to be on the inside of like mammal ears or on the tips of their noses. It's an extremely useful color that not only looks like a brick, but hits like one too. Seriously, a tiny bit of this color goes such a long way. Similarly to our confusing name situation with the cobalt turquoises in part two of this little series, I have another Indian red for this list, but this time this color is by Schminke. It is made from two different pigments, PR101 and PR206, and this is a much darker and more heavily granulating color than our previous Indian red slash Terra Rosa. Much like the Mars and Mahogany Browns earlier, I find it a complete joy to paint with. It creates such lovely granulating washes, but also is somehow velvety smooth at the same time. If you don't have access to this color from Schminke, Daniel Smith's Indian Red, or Windsor and Newton's Caput Mortem can also substitute in here, as they are darker than most other single pigment Indian Reds. I promise this is the last time I will give you two nearly identical looking colors in a row. I really did try to narrow it down between either that last Indian Red or this Violet Iron Oxide PR101 by Da Vinci. However, while they look similar on their own, the real difference is in how they handle in mixes. Schminke's Indian Red creates relatively even washes when it's mixed with other colors. Violet Iron Oxide separates and granulates like a dream though, especially with cooler colors like blues and greens. The previous color was more of my fun to paint with color, and this is my useful mixing color. Reining me back in from my love affair with Earth Red, so we can come back to a couple of more standard palette picks. Despite ditching our traditional yellow ochre and burnt sienna on this palette, I did keep around the umbers. Here you are seeing Burnt Umber PBR7 from Da Vinci, but I also love Daniel Smith and Stone Grounds versions as well. Um, I'm not terribly picky, but the things that I look for in a Burnt Umber is that it is a single pigment PBR7, that it has a warm dark brown tone, it re-wets well and plays nicely with others. This version has a slightly yellow undertone that is distinctly lacking from our other red leaning earth tones that we've already seen. My first watercolor palette ever did not include raw umber because I didn't like the cool brown hue of it on its own. But that was a huge mistake. It took me years to kind of come around to this and it is such a useful color when it comes to mixing, especially for wildlife and animals and I cannot imagine not having a raw umber or sepia on my palette moving forward. This one is from Da Vinci, but like the previous color, I also like Daniel Smith and both version that Stonegrounds offers as well. This color also has a yellow leaning undertone that separates it from those previous red leaning earth tones. Our next color is one that I have been singing the praises of ever since a viewer sent me a sample years ago, and that is dark brown, made from PY-164 by Windsor and Newton. In previous videos and tutorials, I've been hesitant to suggest it because Windsor and Newton's version specifically was a limited edition color that is no longer available. However, Roman Schmal now carries two very similar colors in their range, manganese brown made from the same PY-164 and iron chrome brown made from PBR-29. Also, I had a patron mention to me that Mission Gold also carries this pigment now too, so I am so glad it is more widely available now. All of these dark browns that I mentioned by name are opaque and heavy feeling, but like in a comforting way, not a drag me down kind of way, um, at least to me. The undertones are a purpley red color, yet somehow it still feels cool overall for some reason. Again, this isn't a color for you if you are not into opaque watercolors, but Boy, do I love painting with it. 
And if you don't like opaque watercolors, but do like gouache, I would even suggest trying to use this color in a gouache palette too. I think it would work really well there. And it really is that opaque. We are in the home stretch as we approach our last three neutrals on the palette. The first neutral will be no surprise to anyone who's been here on the channel before. It is Denise's Gray, made from PB36 and PR101 by Da Vinci. As I mentioned before, this is made from smoother versions of both Cerulean Blue and Indian Red to create a soft granulating gray, which is my go-to for most gray animals from elephants to chinchillas and koalas to pigeons. It can be adjusted in either direction by adding more of the blue or more to the red to the mix, and it also neutralizes well with other colors without losing a ton of saturation. Used on its own with lots of water, it separates into its base colors in a loose watercolor wash for some really interesting grays. Even though I have both base colors on my palette and pretty much any palette these days, having it mixed together in one pan saves my brush from a lot of digging through my cerulean time and time again to mix the same gray over and over. When I first got into watercolor in 2015, there was this really big stigma around using black watercolor. However, having a quick option for a near black color on my palette is no longer negotiable for me. Mix your own blacks, yada yada, I don't care, it's 2023 or 2024, and we are living in a dystopian world. I have not got the patience for that anymore. Um, is it important to know how to mix your own black? Yes. Do we need to mix it from scratch every time? Absolutely not. So in terms of picking out the right black, I prefer cool leaning dark tones, which gives me a good starting point. Rather than having a neutral single pigment black, though there's absolutely nothing wrong with that if that's what you prefer, I have two bluish black mixes on this palette. The first of these dark, almost black mixes is another color that I collaborated with Da Vinci on to create, Stormy Blue made from PB60 and PR101. It is similar in concept to Denise's Gray, meaning that it is a two pigment, semi-opaque, neutral color, but this one uses Indenthrine Blue instead of Cerulean, meaning that it will get much darker than Denise's Gray. You can think of this color as one that is an opaque version of the final color on our palette, Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray can vary a lot from brand to brand, and there's both neutral versions and bluish versions available. My favorites are the bluish versions from Winsor & Newton, Schmincke, and Daniel Smith. This is the Winsor & Newton's version made from PV15, PBK6, and PV19. I would use this instead of Stormy Blue if I wanted something that was more transparent and a little bit less heavy. A close second for this final spot is Stone Ground's Mayan Green Deep. It is, as the name suggests, a greener color than Payne's Gray, but used in its mass tone, it is a really fun option for a black on your palette. And we did it. We made it. That concludes my 48 favorite watercolors on the market today in 2023 slash 2024. I know that they're not all conventional choices, but I hope that you found some fun gems in there. If you decide to try any of them out for the first time, I would love to hear what you think about them. And I hope that they bring you as much joy as they have brought me. Don't forget to let us all know in the comments below what some of your all-time favorite colors are and or if you had any favorites that you spotted in this video. Thanks to working on this project, I am that much closer to figuring out what I want to do for my updated favorite brands video. However, if you're curious, the final tally for this palette came in at 13 colors from Da Vinci, 11 colors from Schmincke, five each from Roman Schmall and Windsor and Newton, four each from Daniel Smith and Stoneground, and a couple here and there from M. Graham, Sennelier, and A. Gallo. If you'd like to see the high resolution scans, as always, they are available over on Patreon. Thank you all for watching all the way to the end and for being patient with me as I got out all these videos. Thank you to my patrons for keeping me afloat. Be sure to sign up if you would like that lion up print and I will see you all in the next one. Until then, happy new year and happy painting.